Media Day 2010 featured cool temperatures but a warm outlook for the UNCW Seahawks baseball team, especially in regards to their depth on the mound. You know, I like our club. Uh, you know, we've got some experience. We've got uh, some outstanding ability on the mound that uh, we feel like if they can continue to create a little more consistency than we've had in the past, uh, it's got a chance to be as good a pitching staff as we've ever had and as deep as we've ever had. One thing that coaches and players cannot escape on media day is the question regarding expectations. For a UNCW team that finished just 31-23 and 23 last season, including a mere 10-8 and 8 conference record, those expectations are extremely high, with College Baseball Insider projecting them second in the Colonial. Unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a lot of people talk about. You take it a day at a time and, you know, give us your best effort each day and, you know, we'll worry about the, the end of the road uh, when it gets here. But, uh, you know, I think our players are beginning to understand how important each day is and uh, it'll become even more important as you start playing and, and you start beginning to see some results and, um, you know, how well we're playing, the mistakes that we may be making and, and the improvement that's necessary for us to be a quality club at the end of the year. The Seahawks have never been a team to shy away from tough competition and this year's schedule is no different. In addition to a road trip to open the season, UNCW will play four games against opponents ranked in the Baseball America preseason top 20. Our, our early season schedule uh, is a pretty difficult schedule and, and you know on the road at Jacksonville, it's a tough place to play. They had a quality club last year and should be good again this year. Uh, the, the Hughes Brothers tournament with uh, Liberty and Moorhead State and Lehigh. Uh, there's two real quality clubs in, in Liberty and, and Moorhead State, and Lehigh's got a couple arms that, that can probably pitch against anybody in the country. So, uh, and then you roll into Ball State and Wake Forest midweek, and then Duquesne, who is one of the better clubs in the Atlantic 10. And the following weekend, you got Rhode Island, who finished first in the Atlantic 10 last year and uh, won 40 games and unfortunately didn't win a conference tournament, and they stayed home uh, at the end of the year. But they're very, very good clubs. And then midweek, uh, if you're in this area, you're going to play good people. You're going to play in, in regional caliber clubs every day in the middle of the week. And that's why, you know, you see Elon and East Carolina and Coastal and College of Charleston and NC State. So what are the ultimate goals for a program that has long knocked on the door of national attention? You know, our expectations are, are identical from year to year. You know, we're, we're expecting to put ourselves in the, in the top echelon of the league be in a, in a uh, spot to head to postseason play, hopefully host a regional at some point here in the near future and, and get beyond the regional and work our way to Omaha. And, and those are our expectations, uh, and we don't feel like they're unrealistic. Check back next week when we talk to pitching coach Jason Howell and bring you a preview of things to come from the UNCW pitching staff. Also, be looking for the lighter side of media day when we ask some players and coaches about some superstitions and game day routines. For now, this is Aaron Schoonmaker for StarNewsOnline.com.